Howdy, mechanics girls in. Uh, fuel injection. Now, again, comparisons to carburetors and fuel injection. Uh, you got to compare apples with apples. People wonder why uh, fuel injection wasn't fitted for motorcycles a long time ago. And uh, in fact, it was. Um, it's just that um, back then, um, in the 1970s and 80s, um, fuel injection was not the fuel injection of today. And as I, uh, I started my apprenticeship as a mechanic in 1976, yes, I'm actually one of those few people with YouTube videos that actually is a certified qualified motor mechanic. And um, I had to work on these systems on a daily basis, and I had to work on newer systems and learn about those as uh, time progressed. Now, back in, uh, in that, around that time, in the late 70s in Australia, um, pretty much everything still had carburetors being uh, mo mostly constrained by the fact that our cars were sort of a byproduct of uh, American GM Ford cars. Um, American cars have had sort of, um, you know, uh, their Carter and Rochester carbies they've been uh, um, sticking by with for a long time, whereas the European cars all had uh, fuel injection um, earlier during the 1970s, but it was not electronic fuel injection. And this is an example of uh, a fuel injection system that's found on most of those cars, the Bosch K Jettronic. Now, there ain't nothing uh, tronic about it. It was uh, arguably the work of Beelzebub, um, and uh, just horror. Uh, I'll go over the basics of it pretty quickly. It was a full time, um, it was multi point. Uh, multi-port injection it was a, had an injector for each port Not that, that really mattered it wasn't fired by electrics it was uh, simply uh, fuel pressure and the fuel pressure was full time so you know we just continued to inject whether the valves were open or shut um, fuel was fed to a pressure pump and an accumulator to even out the spikes because pressure fuel pressure was fairly sensitive to, to metering here um, fuel was fed up to the fuel distributor here which is this device here, this abomination. And then this flap up here would be raised and lifted and would allow more and more fuel to be delivered. So the flap would lift up higher and higher the more airflow we got in from the inlet here. And it would push this up by velocity of the air. And remember, we're talking about the pitot effect and the difference between um, pressure and velocity. So this is sensing a velocity pressure or a dynamic pressure by the molecule air, air molecules actually hitting the surface and providing the force. The fuel distributor uh, would send fuel to the injectors, as I said, full time. Um, the, fuel the fuel distributor had uh, some controls to uh, compensate for temperature, such as this warm up regulator, which would allow some of the pressure of the fuel pump to be bypassed and back to the tank, and thus lowering the pressure here or raising the pressure. Um, in addition to that, there was an idle up valve that bypassed air past the throttle plate here. There's an idle set screw there that also does the same. This was electrically operated. Okay, so when you started the car, this would operate, open up, and control the amount of air that went through the auxiliary air valve during uh, warm up. And this was also due to warm up. But the uh, um, they were not controlled by any degree of electronics at all. I'll show you them shortly. Uh, and also a thermo time switch. So the thermo time switch would basically control the relay, which controlled um, the, uh, the warm up valves. Um, the warm up valves were crude. This one was the air auxiliary bypass. It had like a little aperture in it that slowed around when it was bypassing, it was closed. When it was bypassing air, it was open. Um, with a biometallic strip simply heated by a winding of coil, two dissimilar metals, and that would bend and open the open the uh, the aperture. Likewise, the uh, fuel warm-up regulator had a simple biometallic strip in it. Um, crude device you probably find in um, in circuit breakers or the like, um, or old toasters. <laughs> Uh, and fuel flow would um, be uh, controlled here for bypass. Now, the other thing it had um, that this thermo time switch would control is the um, is the cold start. 
So you, the cold start would only do it when the thermo time switch said the engine was cold. Otherwise, the cold start injector um, wouldn't inject um, when it was cold. So if this thermo time switch wasn't working, it would inject while it was uh, warm. And uh, it had immense amount of trouble by the fact that it simply had too many moving parts. The main problem with these was is that as the engine wore, um, they got blow by and all of the oil vapor and everything would splooge on this and consume that and uh, also into these vents and uh, air bypass hoses swelling those up making them loose fitting um, terrible here's one Ooh, oh god such ugliness uh, of the likes that you don't see these days there's the uh, fuel distributor I had to work on these things man it's, yeah, you just have to look at the picture I had to actually work on them um, look at that beautiful modern multi-point field injection. Uh, most of them had plastic, solid plastic hoses, um, the crackable kind. Um, this one's got um, high-performance um, braided lines. Yeah. So that was the K-Jetronic. So uh, if you're wondering why cars back in the uh, late 70s were not, um, you know, falling over themselves to uh, fit this except the Europeans. Um, yeah, well, you probably know why now. So that's the K-Jetronic. Now we're going to move to the next version, which is the L-Jetronic Bosch system. We're going to stick with the Bosch systems here because that covers um, pretty much uh, what we need to know. Um, but uh, yeah, as I um, just pointed out in the first place, that these were not an electrically fired injector, and they simply injected full time, um, which... Um, subsequent fuel injectors did and fuel injection systems did right up until sequential time fuel injection um, which is where the fuel is just simply squirted in when the valves open and then just falls into the combustion chamber very, very precisely metered but nevertheless not timed to actually spray when the valve is open um, so um, yeah no big, no big benefit there um, to be had I guess um, you know it was a thing with Bosch and carburetor manufacturers in the US as well, but essentially this was um, just a, a bag of trouble. Okay, well, onto something more modern. Enough of that. I hope you never have to encounter one, and I certainly hope you never have to work on one in your lifetime. The version of fuel injection foisted on us by Bosch was the Bosch L Jetronic. Now, it bears a bit of resemblance to the old K. It's. Um, Got a plenty of types there, but it's got fuel injectors that are now uh, electrically fired. We have a fuel tank, a fuel pump, a fuel filter, and then we have an injector rail, and we have a uh, pressure regulator, and uh, this senses high vacuum at idle and allows some of the fuel to uh, bypass and return to the tank because at a high vacuum of idle, we've got a high vacuum on this side of the injector. Now, although it's electronically fired, the amount of fuel that flows in there is still remains the uh, uh, controlled by the pressure differential each side. So if this is atmospheric, we know the pressure here, we fire it for a certain amount of milliseconds, 11 milliseconds, and we get a certain amount of volume. But if we've got a high vacuum in here, we're going to get more volume. So the vacuum here backs it off, and you'll see one of these at the end of the fuel rail. Um, this version still had the cold uh, cold start injector, so it still had the thermo time switch. It had a water temperature sensor unit on it. It still had the nasty old uh, auxiliary air bypass valve, okay, for when it was warming up with the old bimetallic strip in it. Um, this one was different. Um, in its metering as its control but similarities to the cage electronic in other words it had a flap and that flap would respond to the speed or velocity of the air um, and it also had a temperature sensor and back to the um, electronic control unit which is this one here now um, this one is a relay um, that controls the uh, the cold starting here we had a uh, throttle position sensor, however, this did not send exact positioning to the actual computer. It had 
two position switches in it, or two uh, two micro switches, which only indicated two types of um, of throttle position. So I think that might do it for the day. Okay, we can account.